Our next speaker is Ilko Dolstra. Uh, invented Nix, uh, what, 13, 14 years ago now? Very long time ago. <laughs> um, and uh, a, a, a thing I like to quote when people tell me, oh, Nix, Nix OS is so young. I say, no, 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 it's, it's, it's very old. It's not new at all. Um, and maybe it's just the fate of uh, functional programming languages in general, but I'm uh, grateful that the community is starting to take off and, and usage is, is going up. Um, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, so this talk is just a uh, sort of uh, random or an overview of features in Nix 1.12 in a fairly random order. Um, so this is not Nix 2.0 yet. Uh, it was kind of uh, the goal at some point. But uh, um, so, uh, well, let me start with the status. So it's not actually released yet. Uh, but uh, I think it's in a fairly usable state. So uh, I would like to invite everybody to uh, uh, go and test it and discover things that break and report issues. And then uh, hopefully in a few weeks or so, uh, we might have an actual release uh, after also uh, updating the documentation, uh, which is currently lacking. But uh, then again, uh, that's always the case. So it's not really a new situation uh, with the Nix manual. Uh, uh, so uh, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, of course, you probably know how to uh, upgrade it. So it, it, it does change the uh, database schema, but uh, there's actually a hack in Nix 1.11 that makes it forwards compatible with that schema change. So uh, uh, you, you shouldn't have to be afraid to uh, try it out. Um, so uh, yeah, the main thing, or really the main goal of the development in the last, uh, well, really since the last NixCon, uh, was to come up with a new uh, 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 user interface because the uh, the existing one, so all these uh, commands, nix env, nix store, and so on, uh, yeah, hadn't been really so much designed as evolved. Uh, so the, uh, yeah, there wasn't much uh, uh, structure or thought behind them. So uh, they're kind of a mess. So uh, the idea was to create a new uh, command. Uh, and that uh, command exists, but it's uh, lacking things. So it doesn't quite uh, uh, justify Nix 2.0 label yet. So in particular, one of the, really the main goal was to replace Nix env uh, with something more declarative, uh, but that doesn't exist yet. So uh, 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 so m maybe once if we have that, then we could call it uh, 2.0. Um, so another thing to mention is that the syntax of the Nix commands that we have at this point is still a bit experimental, so things might uh, change depending on feedback and uh, other insights uh, that uh, might occur. Um, so the syntax might still uh, change. Uh, so all, another thing to mention is that uh, it's a goal here that this command is uh, more scripts friendly than the existing one. So every command should have a JSON flag with the emphasis on should. It's not actually the case yet, but uh, uh, most of them have. So uh, yeah, uh, and, and so without the JSON flag, the, the idea is that the in, intent is uh, or the output is intended to be uh, uh, human uh, consumable. So it might change. Um, so uh, yeah, so the general syntax is nix subcommand, so it's like the git uh, uh, free letter uh, command. Uh, and a uh, nice thing is that it's fully self-documenting, so uh, 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 all the flags for all the subcommands uh, are uh, queryable via dash dash help. Uh, it even has uh, uh, examples in the dash dash help, so there are no man pages yet or anything like that, but uh, maybe uh, maybe you don't need them. Uh, also note the line at the <laughs> note the line at the bottom that says this program is experimental, so uh, don't get too attached to it. Um, uh, yeah, another thing to say about the new uh, command line interface is that uh, all uh, configuration options, so all nix.conf options, are now supported as command line flags, which is just a small convenience that makes them easier to type. So instead of typing dash dash option sandbox true, 
you just say dash dash sandbox. Um, yeah, and uh, oh, and you can put configuration options in, in your home directory now in dot uh, config slash nix slash nix dot conf. Um, so, for instance, if you have uh, user specific uh, substitutors or things like that, you can put them in there. Uh, yeah, so uh, now, now I have a bunch of random uh, subcommands. So there is a command called nix build. So this is intended to replace nix dash build. Uh, and so the general syntax of, of most of these nix commands is that they get a set of so-called installables, which is, well, maybe not a great term, but it's intended to be something that can evaluate to a uh, store path. So it might, it, it can be a store path directly or a symlink to a store path. Uh, but it can also be a uh, an attribute name like nix packages dot hello. Um, so um, so another change in uh, compared to uh, nix env is that um, uh, uh, we're trying to get rid of uh, searching for packages using their name because that's uh, super slow. So the idea is that you uh, reference packages by their attribute name, which is I guess what most people were doing anyway with the dash uppercase a option. Uh, but so here it's the default. And uh, so a command like nix build, uh, so if you say nix packages dot hello, it searches in a um, uh, yeah, synthesized attribute set that consists, or that's synthesized from your nix path. So if you have nix packages in your nix path, then uh, yeah, nix packages will refer to that. So uh, nix packages dot hello refers to the hello attribute in uh, nix packages. Um, so uh, another nice thing is that it has a uh, progress indicator. So uh, I can show that here. So. <laughs> so, uh, so now it's building something and it indicates that it is in the configure phase. And uh, well, you don't see the, so, so over there is the, uh, the last uh, log line from the build, uh, and now it's finished. Okay, so yeah, the idea is it doesn't, uh, it tries to follow the Unix philosophy, or part of it, which is that if you have nothing interesting to say, you should say nothing. Uh, so and most of the time, hell, this output of Nix commands was not interesting, so I uh, shouldn't uh, say it. In fact, it could be argued that the progress bar shouldn't be shown afterwards, but uh, um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, and uh, other commands also have this progress indicator, so for instance, nix copy. Um, so uh, on the topic of building, uh, remote build configuration is now a lot easier. So it used to be that uh, you had to set up uh, machines.nix, set up a nix build hook environment variable, set up some config options, uh, which is fine if you're only doing that once, but uh, especially for a sort of incidental use Say I have I want to build something on a Mac and I want to forward it to a Mac machine that I happen to have available. Uh, so you can now just specify it on the command line. So you say uh, mix build dash dash builders, and then uh, the SSH uh, uh, address and the machine type, and it will start building and it will actually say uh, that it is building a derivation on that machine. So uh, that's kind of nice. Um, yeah, so as, as an example of uh, how that installable syntax is, is kind of used for all, almost all commands, uh, so there is a command called nix log, which replaces nix store dash dash read log, which shows you the, the build log for uh, a derivation. But this one also works on attributes. So you can say nix log nix packages dot hello, uh, and it will sh show you the log file for the hello package. Uh, and another new feature is that it will uh, get it from the binary cache uh, if, uh, if, if, if no log file is available uh, locally. Uh, okay, so uh, yeah, I said we didn't have a replacement for nix env, but actually, so there is a replacement for nix env dash qa. Uh, and the big difference is that it has a cache. So, uh, <laughs> Uh, so you can uh, type nix search blender and uh, that takes 0 0.1 seconds. 
Uh, and uh, so, yeah, it, it, it's, um, uh, it's just a, a regular expression, so it will match with, uh, or, or I don't actually remember if it was a regular expression or a substring search, but it will look in attributes names and package names and descriptions for uh, uh, the argument that you specify. So, uh, uh, yeah, it's a lot less strict than uh, uh, Nix and Vtesh, uh, QA. <coughs> Uh, of course, now you have a cache coherence problem. So uh, uh, right now, the cache never gets updated until you, unless you explicitly ask for it. Um, so yeah, and that's the trade-off. Uh, yeah, so there is a command called nix path info, which replaces nix store dash q. Um, and uh, so one nice uh, flag that it has is dash uppercase s, which uh, shows you the uh, closure size of a path. So, for example, Nix path info dash rs on your current NixOS system, if you pipe it through sort, it will show you the closure size of every path in the NixOS system sorted by size. So, that's uh, uh, my kind of my obsession is uh, closure size reduction. So, uh, this is uh, this is useful for that. Um, uh, so another thing to mention, so I'll come back to the next slide, is uh, there is a store uh, parameter. So you can specify which uh, Nix store you want to uh, uh, apply the query to. So usually that's your local store, but it can also be a binary cache. So a binary cache is considered a store because it contains uh, um, store paths and with references and signatures and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, or here's a more uh, complicated example. Show every path whose closure size is bigger than one gigabyte sorted by closure size. So a shout out to my favorite command in the world, uh, JQ. Uh, it's a beautiful command. Um, yeah, so on the topic of those uh, store uh, URIs, so it was always the case that in Nix uh, there was this store abstraction. So there was an abstract store class uh, providing operations that you can do on a Nix store, like adding a file, building a derivation, querying information about a path. Uh, but that really only had two subclasses, namely a local store, which is if you're accessing it directly, or a remote store, which is if you're uh, accessing it through, a, uh, um, through the uh, Nix daemon. Uh, but uh, uh, so we've kind of generalized this uh, concept. So things like substitutors are now stores. So substitutors are gone. Uh, they're subclasses of that store API. Uh, and also things like, uh, yeah, uh, and Nix copy closure, uh, copying things to uh, the Nix store on a remote SSH or a remote machine via SSH. Uh, that was done in a totally ad hoc way. Uh, so now that's also a store. So. So here's a list of uh, available stores. So there's local, there's remote, uh, there's also slash path. Uh, so uh, that's the same as local, only it's, uh, it, it, it basically uses a uh, change route or well, actually more a, uh, a mount namespace uh, that allows you to um, uh, uh, use a Nix store in a different location. Uh, so there's HTTPS and HTTPS, HTTP and HTTPS, so that uh, replaces download from binary cache. So uh, another very nice thing about Nix 1.12 is, uh, 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 thanks to the great work of Shea, uh, we, have, we got rid of the Perl dependency, so uh, uh, this is part of that. Um, so another very nice uh, feature is that it supports HTTP 2, uh, which gives a huge performance difference because uh, if you're uh, as Nix does, you're querying a binary cache for hundreds of tiny little files. Um, uh, HTTP 1 doesn't like that. Uh, you have to use dozens of uh, parallel TCP connections and then routers start uh, crashing. And, uh, uh, so HTTP 2 is much uh, nicer. Uh, and it's more reliable uh, because we now retry uh, a lot more uh, error conditions. Uh, so uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, other stores, so there's a uh, file for a local binary cache, S3 for an S3 binary cache, uh, and SSH for uh, remote machines. Uh, so yeah, as an example of, uh, of, of that, so uh, there is a command called nix copy, which uh, generalizes a whole bunch of commands. So nix copy closure, nix push, uh, and uh, a bunch of scripts that we use to populate binary caches. 
so for example, Nix copy closure, that's now just uh, uh, Nix copy dash dash to and then an SSH host, or uh, conversely dash dash from an SSH host. Uh, and Nix push is just copying to a file binary cache and uh, populating uh, something like cache.nixos.org that's copied to uh, S3. Uh, so yeah, uh, so if you want to have your own binary cache in S3, that's now uh, uh, really easy. Um, yeah, so th there's now this, well, okay, so like I said, change root store is a misnomer, but uh, uh, so what you can do here is this is nice if you don't have right access to slash, but you still want to install Nix, and you want to be able to use uh, pre-built binaries for slash Nix slash store. So, um, uh, so you can just say dash dash store and then a path to which you do have write permission, uh, and then it will use that instead. So this only works on Linux because it uses the magic of uh, mount namespaces. Um, but uh, yeah. Uh, so now you might be thinking, uh, okay, so you can build things, but uh, that doesn't help you in running them. So there's also a command called nix run, which is mostly intended as a replacement for nix shell dash p, but it also supports these change root stores. So it will uh, uh, run the command in a mount namespace where slash nix slash store is bound, bind mounted to your uh, local store. So, uh, for example, you can say nix run uh, hello, uh, and you can run it. Uh, yeah, and in, 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 if you do the, if you do this on NixOS, then uh, nothing else will be present uh, because you're mounting this nix store on top of the regular one. But uh, yeah. Um, uh, so uh, nix verify is a command that. Uh, verifies whether store paths are unmodified and are signed. So uh, a new thing in Nix 1.12 is that uh, store paths now have signatures. So it used to be that uh, only uh, binary caches uh, had signatures, and these signatures were only checked uh, during substitution. So uh, before downloading a NAR from a binary cache, it would check whether it had a trusted uh, signature. Uh, but now these, these signatures are also stored in the uh, in the local database, so you can query later uh, whether paths are trusted. So, for example, a command like nix verify dash r on Thunderbird uh, will verify the closure and see whether it has uh, enough signatures. So you can uh, even uh, uh, pass flags like uh, each path should ha have at least two different signatures or something like that. Uh, so, for instance, here it shows that. Uh, uh, all paths except one are uh, are trusted. Uh, yeah, there's a command called nix eval, which replaces nix instantiate. Not much exciting about that. Uh, there's a command called uh, nix edit, which uh, uh, is also not super exciting. So it opens the source code of a uh, package in your editor. So it's actually. Uh, 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 for years, I had a, a, an alias uh, in my environment that uh, did this in a hacky way, but uh, yeah. Um, so this is actually useful. So there is a command called nix build dash dash hash. So it doesn't yet, I realized, have a flag in the new nix build. But uh, uh, so this is a build mode that builds a derivation, computes this hash, and then moves it to the right location in nix store if it were a fixed output derivation, like fetch URL or fetch git or whatever. Um, so the idea is that this can replace all those Nix prefetch, fetch, prefetch scripts, which are kind of annoying because so all those scripts basically do the same thing as the corresponding uh, Nix function, uh, only outside of the Nix uh, outside of a Nix build, and then they uh, do a Nix store dash add to move it to the right place. Um, so uh, now uh, we don't need that anymore. So, for example, if you have a, uh, a derivation that calls fetch from GitHub uh, and you change its, uh, uh, you change it. So now you want to know the new uh, SHA hash. Um, you would do a nix build dash dash hash on that thing, and that would perform the build, and it uh, would give you the hash. 
uh, and it would move it to the right location so you don't have to download it, it again afterwards. Um, so that's, uh, that's that. Um, so uh, command that I hacked up during, sorry for the small font, so command that I hacked up during the uh, Amsterdam hackathon a few weeks ago is Nix Y Depends, probably needs a better name, but it uh, shows you why a path has another path in its closure. So if you're de debugging closure size issues, you often have the, uh, the question of uh, why do I have this dot .def output in my closure? Why do I have GCC in my closure? Uh, because that suddenly adds uh, 50 megabytes. Uh, so you can do things like nix y depends, uh, so slash run slash current system, nix packages dot glfc dot def, and that will show you the, uh, uh, the path through the uh, closure graph from the first path to the second one. So here there is a chain of dependencies going from the top level path through uh, system path, through uh, some, some debug path, through GCC to glibc-dev. So uh, here the problem that's going on is that I had some debug symbols in my um, environment and apparently those trigger a dependency on GCC which triggers a dependency on the glibc uh, developer outputs. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So, uh, th that was, so now on to the language changes. So, uh, um, so probably the major one is builtins.fetch git, which fetches a git repository at evaluation time. Um, and it doesn't need a, a, a content hash, so uh, uh, unlike, um, uh, an import from derivation on a fetch git uh, call uh, where you have all sorts of problems that it doesn't work in read-only <coughs> mode uh, and you need to specify a hash. Uh, so here you can just uh, 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 import. So for, for example, in NixOS, uh, uh, this makes it feasible to have NixOS modules uh, in different repositories. Uh, so we always had this problem that uh, um, well, take Hydra. So Hydra contains a NixOS module, uh, but then Nix packages contains pretty much an exact clone of that module, which may or may not be in sync with uh, uh, the upstream uh, Hydra repository. So that that's now unnecessary. You can get rid of that Hydra module in Nix packages, and you can just import the right one um, directly. So this allows sort of a more modular. Uh, NixOS. We don't have to put everything in NixOS. Uh, uh, yeah. So, uh, and it's also possible to specify Git repositories on the com command line. So, for example, you can specify that Nix packages should be some uh, uh, particular Git uh, checkout. Um, yeah. Another interesting thing is uh, structured derivation attributes. So. Uh, it's always the case that derivation attributes get flattened to uh, to uh, uh, string name value pairs uh, because they need to be passed through the environment. Uh, but now you can pass basically anything except functions. Uh, so attribute sets, lists, nested attribute sets, booleans, nulls, integers, uh, floats. Uh, you can all pass it all. Uh, so it all gets ma mapped to a JSON file, and uh, uh, and then it's up to the builder to do something with that. So as a convenience to uh, bash users, uh, any uh, attributes that can be mapped can be squeezed into a um, bash array or a bash associative array. Uh, 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 yeah, that, so it, it will do that for you. So for example, uh, here, configure flags would actually be a bash array. Uh, and, and so, for example, the fact that we have white space in the first element of that uh, flag is no longer a problem. Uh, so, and, and also things like, uh, 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 for example, we have all these Boolean flags for, um, uh, what's it called, the um, uh, fortify flags, so the hardening flags. Uh, so that could now be done in a nice way, like a hardening dot fortify is true or something like that. And uh, that, that would end up as a bash uh, associative array. 
Uh, now, obviously, this breaks everything, so you have to uh, <laughs> opt into it uh, um, uh, by setting a magic attribute. So maybe someday in the future we could convert standard env to that uh, and then set that for in make derivation. But uh, yeah, uh, how am I doing on time? Okay, yeah. So, yeah, another minor feature is uh, placeholder. So, this makes it possible uh, to refer to your own outputs. So, for example, if I want to say configure flags is prefix is dollar out, well, you can't say dollar out there because um, that doesn't get evaluated. So, uh, uh, yeah, so this, this uh, causes some magic that uh, will actually cause a substitution at just before build time with the right value. So. Uh, so a bunch of minor improvements. Nix REPL is now part of Nix. Uh, there is a special channel syntax that you can use in uh, file names and so on uh, as a shortcut for uh, yeah, those very long URIs. Uh, sandbox builds now use slash build instead of slash temp as a temporary directory because that was a source of security bugs. Uh, namely, builds could accidentally <laughs> store slash temp, slash temp directories in things like an R path, uh, and then somebody could recreate that path and uh, inject things into other people's executions. So, uh, sand Linux Sandbox uh, now provides bin SH by default, base64 hashes. Oh, yeah, automated, automatic garbage collection. So, there's now a flag that uh, Nix will automatically start garbage collection if during a build, uh, the free disk space drops below a certain level. So, Max, <laughs> uh, oh, that's not very interesting. Uh, yeah, binary cache signatures are now required by default. That was already the case on NixOS. Uh, and that's actually it. So uh, thank you for your attention. <laughs> Question about build and fetch git. Mm -hmm. um, you say this is uh, taking place at evaluation time, not instantiation time. Mm -hmm. uh, is there uh, 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 that's the same. Uh, uh, it does not take yeah. place at build time. Build time, it's, right. Yeah. Okay, sorry about that. Um, is there any caching involved? Uh, yeah. Because when you just uh, clone Nix packages, then it takes five minutes. Yeah, yeah. so it's cached, and in fact, it's, there's some pretty aggressive caching, so that I, I don't remember the details, but I think there is even a time to live, so um, it, it won't even check whether there is a new version within a certain time window. Uh, so if you run a, a build within five seconds of each other, it's not going to uh, uh, check GitHub <laughs> twice. So also about the Git support, does that mean uh, Nix has a runtime dependency on Git? And is there a way to specify Git via SSH? Um, so it currently has a loose dependency on Git. So it does not actually have Git in its closure. It just calls Git from via the path. Yeah. Okay. Uh, last question. Yeah, so uh, great talk. I'm already really looking forward to use that. Uh, so on the risk of opening a can of worms, um, so the word bus factor sounds uh, scary. So I, I, I go for, for island factor. What happens if you decide to live on an island tomorrow without internet and you want to be with the nature? Um, <laughs> well, it's open source, so anybody can uh, <laughs> hack on it. So. <laughs> I would say that because we got rid of the Perl dependency, the bus factor has gone. Uh, it's always the question: it's gone down or up? It's uh, uh, in any case, uh, there there are more people who could uh, replace me. That's because I, I checked the contribution stats, and they are scary. <laughs> mm.